So your stress test was abnormal. And what that means with an imaging stress test is we take an overall image of your heart. There's no detail. It's just sort of a silhouette of your heart before and after stress, either walking on the treadmill or a chemical that simulates exercise. And then we compare those two images. Those two images should be identical. There should be no difference in them before and after stress on the heart. If it's abnormal in the sense that there is a defect in the image after the stress, that indicates that you might have a blocked artery corresponding to that section of your heart. No test is perfect, and stress tests are made to be overly sensitive because we'd rather tell someone they have a blockage and them not as opposed to miss someone that does. So there are some false positives, but overall we think these tests are fairly reliable. If you have an abnormal stress test, we usually recommend additional testing to make sure. Well, we've recommended that you have a heart catheterization or an angiogram on your heart, so I wanted to explain how that happens. Nowadays, we bring you to the cath lab, we give you sedation, we like you to be very relaxed during this procedure. 90% of the time, we're able to go through your wrist. So we'll prep your wrist for the procedure, but we'll also prep your leg in case we can't use your wrist. What we do then is we numb your wrist, enter it with a small catheter, we run that catheter up to your heart, it's basically a hollow tube, and we inject iodine into the bloodstream of your heart. What we wanna see are nice, smooth coronary arteries, what we're worried about seeing are areas that look like hourglass where cholesterol has built up inside the artery. If we see a significantly blocked artery, particularly if it looks like it's active or if it corresponds to your stress test, we usually recommend doing an angioplasty and or a stent. In that case, we thread a small wire into the coronary artery, followed by a very small balloon, followed by a balloon with wire mesh on it that we open up inside the plaque when we take the balloon and wire out, the mesh stays in there like a conduit to hold the artery open. That's what a stent is. So when you've heard of a friend having a stent, that's what they're talking about. That whole procedure takes about an hour, even if we have to put a stent in, and you're sedated during the whole time. The risk of the procedure, including if you need a stent, is a one in a thousand risk of something catastrophic happening. Death, stroke, loss of limb, loss of kidney function, something horrible, one per thousand. There's a one in a hundred risk of getting a complication at the vascular access site, like in your wrist, or if we have to go through your leg. The most common one is simply a large bruise called a hematoma. There's also a one in a hundred risk of needing emergency heart surgery. And that usually occurs in the scenario where we try to open an artery and it doesn't behave. Either the artery won't open or the stent won't open or the artery subtly shuts down. One time out of a hundred, you have to go right to the operating room. Having said all that scary stuff, most people go home the same day that they have a heart cath, even if they have a stent. After we're done, we pull all that out of your wrist or your leg. We watch it for a few hours. If everything's going well, we let you go home. So that's the general idea behind a heart catheterization or an angiogram. The stent is wire mesh that's on a tiny little balloon. We put a wire down your coronary artery past the areas of blockage. We go in with the balloon usually and open up the blockage just a little bit. And then we go in with the balloon with wire mesh on it and open that up inside the artery to hold the artery open. That's like a conduit. So when we let the balloon down and take the wire out, the stent stays in there holding the artery open. There are all different kinds of stents, but nowadays we almost always use medicated or drug-eluting stents because their success rate is so high. Most of those stents, about 96% of them, stay open forever. Sometimes we have to put in more than one stent, and that usually is, has to do with the length of the blockage. Sometimes one stent can't cover it, or you have multiple areas of blockage, we'll put in multiple stents. But the risk, whether you have one stent or several stents, is really about the same, one per thousand for something catastrophic to happen, and a one in a hundred risk of needing emergency bypass surgery. Usually stents are put in at the same time as your heart catheterization, although sometimes we like to time the procedure if we need specialized equipment, or if you think it's gonna take a lot longer than usual, or for some reason we wanna discuss it with you ahead of time. But most of the time, about 90% of the time, if we see a tight blockage that we were expecting to find, we'll go ahead and stent it right at the time of your heart catheterization. Sometimes we have to use specialized balloons to open up particularly hardened arteries before we put a stent in. And those are the kind of things that we might want to time it and bring you back a separate day for. After your heart catheterization, even if you have a stent, most people go home the same day, you'll have a bandage on your wrist. We ask you to take it easy with your wrist for about five days. And what that means is no heavy lifting, nothing over 10 pounds for five days. But usually your wrist will heal very quickly after a cath, even if you have a stent placed. 
You just have to be careful with it for a few days, but you'll be up walking the same day as your stint. You may feel a little tired the first day, and of course we ask you not to drive the first day, but recovery is actually fairly quick after a stint. If we have to go through your leg, it's a little bit longer. It's the same principle, but because that artery is larger, we ask you to take it easy for a few days. We'll keep a close eye on your leg, um, but you heal pretty quickly from a stent, even if we have to go through your leg.